much, Chairman Smith, Ranking Member Johnson, members of the committee. I am happy to be here today to discuss uh, with you the current state of Federal support for science, technology, engineering and math education, that is, STEM education, in the context of the President's FY14 budget, the five-year strategic plan for STEM education delivered to Congress last Friday, and our shared interest in improving the coordination, efficiency and effectiveness of Federal STEM ed programs. I think all of us in this room understand that high-quality education in the STEM fields is essential not only to provide our citizens with the skills and training they will need to create and fill the high-tech businesses and jobs of the future, but also to ensure that we have the science-savvy citizenry needed for a well-functioning democracy in an era when many of the issues facing government have significant science or technology content. The President certainly understands this, and his fiscal year 2014 budget supports that recognition with a STEM education investment of $3.1 billion, a 6 percent increase over the 2012 enacted funding level. As important as that dollar amount, though, is the thought that the administration has given to how to derive maximum value from this investment. That is the focus of the administration's five-year strategic plan for STEM education, recently submitted to members of this committee and others in Congress, and it is reflected in the STEM education reorganization proposals in the President's FY14 budget. Before I describe the key elements of that reorganization, let me note that it is a priority of this administration to leverage the Federal Government's direct investments in STEM education through partnerships with the philanthropic and private sectors, partnerships that to date have resulted in more than $700 million in contributions and in-kind services in support of our STEM education goals. The reorganization of Federal STEM education programs proposed in the President's FY14 budget would designate a lead Federal agency for each of four key families of educational activity. The Department of Education would have the lead for K-12 instruction. The National Science Foundation would have the lead both for undergraduate education and for graduate fellowships. And the Smithsonian Institution would have the lead for the informal education activities that typically take place outside the classroom. As part of the reorganization, 78 of the 226 STEM education programs currently spread across 13 different Federal agencies would be eliminated, and another 48 would be consolidated within agencies. Ten new programs would be added, making 110 programs altogether going forward. The 78 programs that would be eliminated accounted in FY 2012 for about $175 million, or about 6 percent of the total appropriation for Federal STEM education activities in that year. Those savings would be distributed to the lead agencies, roughly $100 million to the Department of Education, $50 million to NSF, $25 million to the Smithsonian to help support their added responsibilities. The proposed reorganization was designed to preserve the most valuable of the STEM education programs in the mission agencies, those most effectively leveraging unique agency assets or serving unique agency STEM education pipeline needs, and every agency that had a STEM education portfolio in 2012 will continue to have one in 2014, with the addition of the Smithsonian making a total of 14 Federal agencies active in the STEM education domain. I believe that this new structure will help ensure that related programs are coordinated, redundancies are minimized, evaluation is improved, and resources are focused on programs that can deliver the most impact per dollar in their respective domains. I look forward to working with this committee on our common vision for improving STEM education for all of America's students, and I will be pleased to try to answer any questions the members may have. Thank you.